Welcome to another episode of the DJ Sessions presents the Virtual Sessions. I'm your host, Darren, and right now I'm in the virtual studios in Seattle, Washington, and sitting on the other end somewhere in the world. I, be- I know it's in the U.S., but I'm not exactly sure, but we're going to get it from you, Julian. We got one half of the alchemists in on the Virtual Sessions with us today. How's it going today, Julian? Hey, doing really well. Thanks so much for having us. You're welcome. And definitely, where are you at right now? I'm currently in San Diego, and my partner is in Zurich, Switzerland. At a hockey game, I heard. At a hockey game, yeah. Definitely. We just got our own NHL team here up in Seattle. It's been quite exciting. Uh, we, one of our venues that we do a lot of events at is two blocks from the stadium, so and it holds 400 people. So every game, it's like hockey, 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 and it's sold out games, and you know, it's just crazy, the hockey mania going on here now that we have a, an NHL team, and before that, we had – you know, uh, the minor league teams, the Seattle Thunderbirds and, the, and now the, the Silver Tips, um, but bringing NHL, it, it's exciting. I, I got into it a little bit because I was working for the hockey teams years ago. So I understand the passion of a hockey fan having to go to those matches and getting them in. So we'll get Dave next time on the show. But, you know, diving into your music, your style of music, your genre of music, if you could describe your music in three words, what would you call it? I would call it captivating. You know, I think our, our music tells stories. Uh, that's really kind of a, a, a main component that Dave and I try to do when we write our music is we pick themes, you know, whether it's like a Celtic theme or a Viking theme or, um, you know, the, or we had a really big track called Runes, uh, which you know, it's, it's, everything is, is, is based on themes and that's kind of how we, we approach our music to, to truly tell a story. I know a lot of people say they, they try to tell stories with, with music and things like that, but everything that we do has a very clearly defined theme. So it kind of transports you to like a different, a different world, so to speak. It's not as traditional as, um, as most dance music that's that's out there, you know, that just kind of follows the uh, a format. And not that there's anything wrong with that. We have some tracks that do that, but the majority of our tracks really try to dive into one specific theme. And these themes, uh, when you come up with them, where would you say that the, the, the heaviest influence comes from? Because you, you mentioned, you know, Journey, Runes. Uh, are you kind of into the... Um, how do I say fantasy realm? Are you two kind of fantasy kind of fans or, or do you do you look at science fiction as well? Or where are you drawing this from when you decide to, to come up with this? So a lot of our inspiration actually comes from just listening to different vocalists or, you know, going through uh, YouTube videos and, and finding things that are, that are truly different. You know, like ethnic parts of the world, different types of instruments that you wouldn't normally hear in, you know, peak hour trance tracks. Uh, we really try to incorporate that in, in, into it. So we might just be sitting on YouTube, just going through different videos of things that have absolutely nothing to do with dance music. Um, and, you know, we'll hear something, you know, like we, we did a, tr- uh, a track called K- Karuna uh, a few years ago, and that was with somebody that had never even heard of, of dance music. She was like a a Tibetan mantra singer, you know, that that, that was completely unrelated. And we just heard her voice and felt captivated by it and felt that we could truly tell a story with, with, with her own style. And we incorporated that into, into what we do. Another track we did, uh, the first real good track that we had was called Deva. Uh, which was uh, based on Indian folk singers from India. And we, we brought in uh, a true Indian kind of band. Their, their name was Staccato. And uh, they, they just sang like Indian hymns that, that came through. Again, nothing to do with dance music, but when we put it to, to dance music, it, it really worked. Uh, then we did a follow-up with Rudra, same, same type of idea runes um we have a new one that we just finished with uh, like a siberian singer um things that just have never really been done at least to our knowledge and dance music and it makes for a very unique sound 
Um, Absolutely. And you would say your genre that you, you fall in and not to, not to, to kind of put you in a box, but it falls into more of the side trance realm. Is that correct? Right. A lot of our influence drives from just trance and psychedelic trance. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's been both Dave and I's passion for, I mean, decades, literally. Uh, you know, I grew up in, well, I didn't grow up, but all of my family is from Belgium and Europe. Uh, and I moved to the United States when I was five years old. So my cousins were, um, what, four or five years older than me. And I was really introduced to dance music at a very young age. I would say seven or eight years old was when I really first started getting into it. Every time I would go back for, for summer breaks and, and Christmas and my cousins who were older would introduce me to this. So I was very fortunate to really catch trance music um, as it was kind of coming coming up in Europe uh, with these these amazing uh, clubs like the Cherry Moon in Belgium or the Zillion and just it, everything was being pushed uh, upon me and it reminds me so much of a family of being close to my family so that's that was my connection to trance it was always very personal for me and then as I kind of started progressing through through my journey. I was introduced to psychedelic trance um, by a very close friend of mine here in the United States. And um, it just, it captivated me completely. Just the energy behind it. Like I felt like I could really dance nonstop, which, you know, for, for us, part of going to, to parties is, is really about dancing not so much just standing there with your hands up in the air waiting for something, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, everybody likes their own thing, but for us, we need, we need to move and we, we want to, we want to rave. That and is beautiful. Uh, and, and, and yeah. you've taken this passion one step further. You're taking it one step further where you're actually building a brand new studio specifically designed to produce this kind of music to showcase this kind of music. He gave me a little bit of the tour uh, mm -hmm. where you're at. Um, we don't need the tour right now. We don't need to you know, show yeah. the build out of it or anything like that, but uh, exciting times. Cause you're looking to, to definitely take the music out there, uh, get more people listening to it. I mean, you were telling me a little bit about your YouTube channel be um, right before the, before we started the interview and tell us about that as well. I mean, you got this, you've been doing this, you fell in love with this music. You, you totally are passionate about it. You're building a new studio for it to get it out to the world. You got this YouTube channel that we I'd love to hear more about that as well. Sure. So um, Dave and I are partners with um, a th third person who's a, a close friend of ours in a YouTube channel called British Heavy Music which is, uh, I just checked, I guess it's uh, 1,126,000 subscribers. We are the biggest in the world for psychedelic trance in terms of exposure for YouTube. And we've always been um, very much influenced by um, big DJs that do radio shows, and it gives them that outlet to really speak to their audience and push the music that they feel speaks the most to them. And we figured that now we were in a good enough place to build a radio studio to kind of create that same atmosphere specifically for the type of music that we do um, and give it more exposure than uh, it might currently have um, to, to our audience and, and to the world. I mean, our goal is to, is to get this, this music that we love out to as many people as, as possible and really try to bridge genres together you know we're we're big believers that in order to innovate in order to push music um, forward so it doesn't just get stuck in a box you have to be able to draw in on other elements of different styles and introduce to introduce new people to what you love so much right because you might have people that that love dubstep or people that love drum and bass or even people that love trance or people that love side trance right it's almost like everybody's in their own little little box in their own little corner and if you try to introduce them to something that doesn't necessarily fit in the box at all times they might not necessarily be as receptive to to give it a listen right 
But if you're able to start incorporating elements of what everybody loves into your own tracks, you can't really categorize yourself as, oh, we're just this. No, you know, we got a little bit of house, you know, like we have a track called Move and a follow up coming up with a, a terrific vocalist who we feel is absolutely one of the best in the world, who is a house vocalist from England. I mean, to us, she is like the absolute house diva queen of, of the 2020s, right? A stuff that has pure soul, pure power um, that you wouldn't necessarily normally hear on a trance record or a side trance record. Um, but when you bring that element to the music, then all of a sudden you have something that nobody's ever heard before. And if your friends can tell their friends that like, oh, well, I heard a little bit of house. It's kind of housey. I don't really know how to describe it. You pique somebody's curiosity and then they're like, well, let me give it a shot. Let me listen. Let me see what this is all about. And usually, you know, nine times out of 10, uh, they like it. So this this studio is kind of uh, our opportunity to kind of bridge the gap between everybody and draw more people into a community that is uh, uh, simply amazing. I mean, you go to side trans parties and you go to trans parties. There's some of the most pure, beautiful people you'll ever see. So, yeah. Will this be cool. will this be a studio where it's strictly music production or will you be oh. you'll be hosting the shows? Will it be radio style shows with interviews and, right. and talking with people? And will you also be incorporating live streaming from the studio as well? Yes. So we don't we're not building the studio as a production studio. Mm -hmm. uh, we have that. You know, okay. uh, I have a room here. Dave has a room. Um at his house uh, and you know we're both linked up through dropbox we have the same exact computers and you know if it's not broke don't fix it type of a thing um, so we have a system that works for production this studio is specifically being built as uh, like a broadcast studio for for radio and interviews kind of like what we're doing and uh yeah also showcasing a lot of our friends um both big artists and other artists that might not necessarily have the, the opportunity to, to land on big radio shows or get big interviews, but whose music is just spectacular. And it gives them the opportunity to, to have an, to an equal playing field um, against other people. So give them a little bit more attention too. It's, it's really all about giving back to, to the community that has given you so much and and we truly believe that if we if we follow that format which which we followed uh up until this point it's it's beneficial for everyone i really i really resonate with that mission statement there of giving it back to everyone um one of the core founding um mission statements of the dj sessions was to give exposure to djs that were not getting exposure and all the big name djs would come and they play on stage they get to do all the tours they get to be on all the radio shows where at the local level, they wouldn't get, I mean, they get their local exposure in their local nightclubs, but nobody was coming in with a full fledged live streaming multi-cam studio, you know, distributing their content and handling that for them where they could just come in and play. And then we would handle out the distribution uh, back in the day via a featured partner with Ustream and Livestream, and then getting our featured partnership with Twitch a few years back. You know, it was always about the, the, the fundamental roots of us was showing the people the world people that would make me move in the dance clubs i would want to say you got to see these people you got to hear these people and when i say see you know it wasn't just a radio station it was that visual representation of seeing what they were like in this show and then even talking with them and doing an interview like what we're doing here and getting to know them a little bit as well doing some pr for them and and kind of doing that and it was it's been an interesting journey so i it's always awesome to hear that other people are undertaking that journey and what their mission statement is. And I, I just want to say, I commend you that I think you're onto something there. Um, definitely people are going to, I think you're going to have your, people are going to be knocking on your door from all over the world. And it's just, it's, it's, it's super awesome. Just helping out that way to spread your love for something in a way or, and or mentor or be an inspiration to others that want to do that as well. So that's, um, that's the other key is inspiration to others. You know, Dave and I've been doing this for a really long time and, you know, we're now starting to find a little bit of success. And I think there's a lot of people out there that might give up a little bit too early or, you know, lose a little bit of faith because they haven't been able to get that exposure or just 
you know, that small win that's needed to give you that motivation to keep going a little bit more. Uh, and we really aim to be able to provide that to people and also building a community of fans all across the world, especially in a time right now with so much uncertainty that's kind of floating around. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of things that make people sad, you know, people need an outlet. People want to feel like they're a part of a community. And when you see clubs, you know, being restricted, being closed down and stuff like that, they need an outlet to where they, they feel heard, to where they feel seen, and to where they feel appreciated. Um, so it goes beyond just the artists. It also goes about building that, that community and making sure that they're taken care of uh, and that we're there to provide value for them in, in the best way that we know how. And we feel that we have a pretty solid roadmap in terms of being able to deliver that to the world. So we're very excited. Awesome. And as part of that roadmap, are you looking into the possibility of doing anything with VR or AR in the, in the future? You know, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I was introduced for the first time to an Oculus machine, maybe like three weeks ago. Yes. And uh, my friends came over to the house and they're like, dude, you got a DJ in the metaverse. I'm like, what is this? What is the metaverse? And they handed me these two controllers and they put this thing on my face and then I'm like looking around and I'm in a club and I look down and there's like a DJ mixer and I'm like, what? This is crazy. You know, I've never seen that. And uh, we're, we're open to it. Uh, I can't say definitively like, yes, for sure, we're going to do it. But I have people around us that, uh, that are actively pushing for it and they know what they're doing. Uh, much more than we do. And we're always open to, to suggestions and, and pushing, pushing things forward. So I would say probably at some point, um, we just need a little bit more guidance on that. And if you, if you know more about it, I'm happy to listen and we can, we can see what we can do. But Absolutely. I think yeah. One of the things we're working on, we have our, we're launching a nightclub in VR and I uh, have the build done. I'm just got to get it uploaded. It, it's not as simple as like doing a website, especially when you get a little bit more complex. When you want it to be cool, it, it always gets more complex. I spent three and a half months just revamping our DJ sessions website earlier in early 2021. And that was at like 30 to 50 hours a week. And I've been doing websites for about 16 years. So I have my dev team and understand that language there. When it gets into VR, it's only because I have a knack and understanding of video editing and working with, you know, 3D programs like After Effects or Motion that I can understand the basics of 3D stuff, but not enough to be dangerous because then I hit an error line and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do now. Because I, I mean, I've never studied that technology, but I think it's going to get easier and easier for people to start building worlds. You know, Facebook just launched Horizons for um, all of the, you know, they open it up out of beta. You have alt space, VR chat, all these different places that you're going to be able to drop your environment in. The one thing I would see um, that I may suggest is that you're building out this new studio. If people could come in and have a VR experience in your studio, like if you had a, a, a 3D camera, like mounted, like a 360 camera in the middle of the studio and people could kind of go in and move around and kind of see what's going on inside your studio. That might be a start there um, to explore, but yeah, it's going to be an awesome time. And the question is, is where to deploy? What's the hottest space? Do you deploy in multiple spaces or do you send all the traffic to one space? Um, I'd love to have that conversation with you offline about it. We're definitely in, in, in the lines of developing it. Sounds like you got some people over there that you're working with though, but definitely see the, the VR experience picking up just like streaming got a big boost over the last couple of years. Um, had things not gone in a certain way, it would have followed a normal curve progression with people getting more and more in tune with it, but it kind of just went and straight up and everybody in the world jumped into live streaming. Two years ago, I'd come to somebody and say, Oh, we're a Twitch featured partner, live streaming DJ show. And they'd say, what's Twitch? And I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Or, or they'd say, who wants to watch a DJ show on a computer? I want to go see it in person. And so, you know, having the whole industry shift to that um, online world definitely helped make it easier for, for people on our side of the fence to do stuff. But I think that that VR is also going to have that churn, especially with companies like Facebook pushing Oculus 
so much. And the price point being the entry price point being 300 bucks to get in that. So excited to see that in AR, a whole nother world of stuff. That's going to be crazy. You know, when we finally get our glasses and we get to go to concerts and put on glass, see a completely different stage experience on top of the stage experience. I think that's going to be the next thing, but we'll talk about that maybe 20, 2023, you know, uh, the glad the software, the technology isn't out yet, but awesome stuff there. Back to the music though. Um, 2022 sounds like it's going to be an exciting year for you with some releases and what could, our, what could we expect um, along the course of a, if there's, I, I don't want to get it. You don't have to drop any secret, secret squirrel stuff with us here, but what can we expect of the, the course of, of some of the releases that will come out for 2022 uh, from Alchemist on your la- on the label you work with? So we, th- we really believe that 2022 is going to be kind of a leap year for us in, in terms of, of progress. We're coming out with our very first artist album, uh, something that we've been working on for quite a while. And uh, we're fortunate enough to be able to release that on Alteza Records, which is the label of Vinavici. Um, who are really good friends of ours and have just been a tremendous support for us. And for that, we're eternally grateful to them. Uh, They were some of the earliest supporters of our music. And uh, we were fortunate enough to to sign with their record label. So um, this for us is is very exciting. And uh, you're going to get to hear a whole lot of new music. And depending on the world situation, uh, you'll you'll probably be seeing us kind of starting to go all around the world to be able to promote this album. Um, I mean, that's the, the, the best perfect case scenario, and we try to be optimistic. So let's plan on that. Um, but yeah, that's that's really the big thing that's coming for 2022. And then the radio show that's going to be as soon as this uh, studio is, is finished, uh, we will be kind of launching that. So two two big things for us in 2022. Uh, and it should be a very fun and interesting year. Awesome. Yeah, we're, I don't, a lot of stuff has happened over the last couple of years, and we've just been on the grind as well. And uh, we're really looking forward to 2022 as well. So those are exciting things. Can't wait to get that, see that, and talk to you about that as those come out. Um, question, do you feel that the line between DJing and producing has gotten smaller? What do you mean? Uh, you know, there used to be the DJ and there used to be the producer and the producer would try to get the DJs to play their tracks. But now that you find that more DJs are producing and, and that's kind of a, a gateway into things, um, or do you still see there's a huge separation? There's the producer side of things and then there's just the DJ only side of things. Well, that's that's an interesting question because you know, there are people that only produce and then there are people that only DJ. But today you really need to have a brand in, in order to be able to make it as a DJ. And you need to have your own unique sound. You need to you need to be able to stand out somehow, some way, because even from when we first started doing this, it's like now everybody's a DJ. Right. But you need to be able to produce. You need to have your own brand. You need to be able to have your own identity to to stand out. I mean, there's always going to be guys that, you know, are just really good at marketing and they can get, you know, good ghost producers and, and, and make it. But I think the the true artist has a little bit of both, you know, their producers and their DJs. So, yeah, absolutely. We're in talks to, um, it was brought to my attention earlier this year to start a label. And I was like, whoa, okay, I'm going to undertake this. And, you know, who do I bring on? How do I work with it? What do we work with tracks and all the collaborate? I mean, it's a whole nother layer to opening up things um, to what we'd want to do. And we're still, it's slated to possibly happen in 2022 because some of our DJs we work with are producers. Go figure. And, you know, wouldn't it be nice if they had a home or somewhere they could release stuff on and also distribute and, and get it out there? which would be nice as well. And then we could form those partnerships and go down that whole rabbit hole of business and industry. I know nothing about, Um, but you know, it sounds like it is kind of natural progression. If you don't have a good PR person and you're not making a a sound that is kind of yours or that you're known for, you know, how does one arise as a, how do they rise out of the ranks from maybe just the local scene 
to getting into national bookings to maybe even international bookings, um, you know, and, and then you look at the other side of the fence is what is their social media like? Or do they have a large social following? Are they going to be a draw? Is there a reason why people like them? And you're right. I think that is because of the sound that they're creating, if they're producing tracks. So I, I think today, uh, more so than ever, you have to have a unique selling proposition if, if, if you want to make it as a DJ or a producer, because there's so many talented producers out there that just having good music isn't enough anymore. You have to, to find what is going to make you unique um, that people are actually going to want to, to pay you to book you because you're always competing against the guys that are wanting to go out there and play for free. So why would a promoter pay you to come out right when he can get you know anybody from local talent that, that they're willing to just come and play for free just because they want to be on stage so i think that if you're absolutely serious about wanting to try to make a career out of something like this you need to find a unique selling proposition that fits you but that benefits the people that are already where you want to be because it's not just about you as a DJ. And I think that that kind of gets lost a little bit in a lot of the people that, that I talk to that ask us, well, how come you're here and we're not here, right? Because it, for us, it's, we've never thought about it as like, what can people do for, for us? That's the wrong question to be asking if you wanna be in this game. It's what can you do for other people that's gonna bring value to them? What is going to make you stand out to where people are actually going to pay attention to you a little bit more than everybody else? Because there's so much good music. So why you, even us, you know, why should people pay attention to us? Right. Well, it goes beyond what it is that we just provide musically. I think we truly want to bring the best possible product to people. We genuinely want to help people out. We will always listen to anything anybody ever sends us. You know, we, we just, we're, we're quick to give feedback, things that we never received kind of coming up, you know, when you're first starting out uh, and, and you reach out to somebody and only to see that they read your message, but then they ignored you, right? You know, why, why, would, you, why would you want to do that? You know, always treat people the same way that you want to be treated from the beginning and then always try to overgive and, and, and try to be an asset to somebody, right? Cause it's not what the record label can do for you. It's what can you do for the record label, you know? So that that's kind of the mindset shift that if people are watching this all the way through and you're truly serious and you're kind of wondering, you know, how come I'm not further along, you know, the music needs to be good. That's the first step, but then you need to figure out how you can help other people achieve what it is that they want to achieve. And then you'll start seeing a little bit of traction. And I don't think it could have been said better um, we have a, I have a strict rule that I've gone on this whole, once I got into live streaming, coming out of podcasting and broadcast television, and I even held this rule then was I will give away 98% of the information that I know for free to people. Um, you know, like here, where can I go? Darren, how did you do this? Okay. Go over here and find this and do this. And, you know, I don't charge them a consultation fee. Or, I mean, if it gets into a bigger project, like, Hey, Darren, build out my studio for me. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm gonna have to spend a hundred hours doing this. Yeah. I'm, you know, pay me for my time. But if it's something I know I can point somebody in the right direction to a website or a link or some source or a book or something that I used in, in my past, um, 98% of that information flows right through me to them to help the culture, to help the scene out. I remain that, that 2% that I say is really when it comes down to like my personal Rolodex, I'm not just going to take all those private numbers and make them public information online. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, you just don't do that. Um, you know, and if somebody came and asked me, Hey, how do I become a Twitch featured partner? You know, it's like, well, here's the route go do this. You got to create all this and, you know, or something of that nature, you know, how do you succeed? You know, um, but always there to help out, uh, give more to the time. game than you take from it in a sense. So. I think I think today something that we see both Dave and I when we get approached with, you know, music is I think people want to rush it. People want the success without necessarily having to put in the work or put in the time. You have to take the time to develop your craft to the best possible ability. And then once you do that, you know, then you'll start seeing a different kind of response that comes from people, you know, but you know, be patient. It's not easy to be patient. It's hard. You know, you always want that 
that gratification, but trust the process and everybody's gone through it. I that know. was one of the biggest things when, when live streaming became so popular last year um, was people were wondering how come I'm only having 10 or 20 or 15 people or 30 people watch my show. And I say, okay, what are you doing to market it? What are you doing to promote it? Well, I put it out on my socials. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's no, that's not enough. And, and what are you doing different? Because not only you, the, the group of people you were in, all your group of friends, they're all streaming live and you're all streaming live at the same time. And then you're also streaming live against everyone else streaming live and streaming live and streaming live. And it's like a person can only watch one show at any given time. You know, you can't have five different shows going. So, you know, um, the burnout or the fallout, uh, what I had predicted was that 60 to 80% of the streamers that jumped on board would also kind of not get that instant self gratification. And they kind of say, oh, I had a streaming show or, oh, it just wasn't worth it for me. I'm going to wait till clubs open back up and, and focus on going back out into the real world. And it was I kind of predicted that would happen after being in the game for so long. But you're right. Just stick at it and keep going and pushing through it. That's what I, I've told a lot of people. Building an audience takes time, you know, yeah. and you never know. It, there isn't a magic bullet. You're going to go to that one group on Discord or find that one group on Facebook and hit a button. And next thing you know, 5,000 people are watching. You're monetizing your stuff and you're making money with a live streaming show. And yay! And it doesn't happen like that. We all started um, at zero. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and speaking of that, it kind of transitions to the next question I wanted to ask you, you know, at clubs or other dance events, should people look at the DJs like they're rock stars or would it be more fun if, if DJs were slightly a little bit more anonymous and just part of the bigger event? I think that just depends on who you ask. Mm -hmm. I think DJs now have become a part of pop culture. I think DJs are the new rock stars. And that's that's perfectly OK. You know, I think I think it's a good thing because it allows people to to make a, an honest, like good living from from doing something that you love. And at the end of the day, I think that when people go to to an event or something like that, they go for a couple of reasons. One, they want to escape their their day to day life and two, they want to be entertained. And. There, there has to be some level of entertainment that happens with the DJ in order to get people to, to get what it is that they're paying for. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's, that's kind of how I feel about it. You know, we, we can do, we can do it both ways. We can go crazy on the microphone on stage and, and, and give them that, or we can do something a little bit more intimate where it's really just, Hey, you want to go on this journey, you know, go on it. And, and you just kind of take a step back. It all depends on the situation and, and what it calls for. On the flip side of that coin, you have a lot of people that just want to go balls out 100% of the time, even if the if the situation doesn't really account for it. And then they they can they can ruin that experience for somebody as well. So I think it's up to the person to use their better judgment to know when to turn it on and and when to turn it off. But I don't I don't see a problem with with DJs being rock stars uh, at all. And you recently just signed with Fantastic Management in 2021. What has that been like? Is that, is that, do you see it as a feather in the hat or like a major boost to your career? You know, for us, that was always the goal. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's another thing that, that I would tell people too, is have a clear set goal of where it is that you want to go. And you might not get there right away. It was very difficult for us to, to kind of, push push up to that level because now you're at a level with the best in the world right but um for us it was a great sense of accomplishment because it it, it solidified all of the hard work that, that we would put into it up until this point all of the rejection all of the what, what everybody goes through you know so it's, it, it it made us proud and we're very proud to be there you know it's it's a it's a privilege because it's it's being a part of the being acknowledged artistically as equal to the best in the world at, at your field right so it's just, just like at a job right if you get promoted you know you feel very proud to be amongst the peers that you've looked up to um you know since since you started this this quest and uh for us that's that's truly how we feel we feel honored we feel privileged and we just hope that um 
we're able to, to, to give them what it is that they expect. And I think up until this point, we've, we've done a pretty good job at that, but we don't, we don't see it as a, as anything other than um, accomplishment and, and being proud of, of what we've done and honored to be there. Yeah. One of, one of our really awesome moments with the DJ sessions was when we were sponsored by Mackie and it was kind of like one of those things of like, Whoa, this is cool. And we were, we had some really awesome stuff in the works. Uh, we're going to put together that, that we'll probably still be there once things can go open up a little bit more, but uh, exciting news for us is that we're now talking to an agency that'll start repping our brand, repping us and solidifying that deal. And that's really exciting for us because it's finally, you get that acknowledgement that all these numbers you have, it sometimes doesn't make sense to your viewership. It's great to have all those, but when somebody comes and approaches you and says, Hey, you have a product here. What are you doing to the, can we help you manage this product? Can we help you brand this product? Can we help you knock on some doors and help you out? And you're like, this is what I've been working for this whole time. This is why I've been holding on to the stream for 12 years. And, and well, just the DJ sessions that is, but I've been in this game for a long time. Um, and and it, it, it is, it is thrilling. It is an awesome milestone but then you got to remember you got to still keep producing that to keep them going um you know because you know uh, going into one of my next questions you know success doesn't necessarily last forever especially for an artist and um what do you do to to save up for the future uh what do you invest some of your earnings in do you have a set investment strategy piggy bank nest egg that you work on yeah so I mean, we reinvest in ourselves. We reinvest in, in the business. I mean, you don't need more production gear. Um, you know, that's, I think a, everybody goes through that mistake. You know, when you're first starting out, you want all the cool toys and stuff like that. We've actually gotten rid of like 99% of the stuff that we use. And if people saw the studio that, that we have just to produce music, they'd be like, wait, what? You make this with that? But like, yeah, you know, now it's, so we, we, we reinvest back into things like the studio, you know, it's, it's expensive to build something like that, but it's, it's all about where can we bring more value? Where can we, you know, it's, it's all about the end user for us. What it is, what is it that they want? Because now through this, to your point, right? Success doesn't last forever. So how do you stay relevant? You need to have your finger on the pulse of what people want. And if you have something like a radio show, to where you can interact with your fans, they can let you know, you know, hey, I like this, or what do you guys think about doing something like this, All right? And if you listen to what they say, they're pretty much telling you what it is that they want. You don't have to guess, right? Do you give them what they want? You'll stay relevant because you're you're not only connecting with your fans, but you're also giving them what they want, which gets them excited because you've acknowledged them. Right. So now they're even more excited to come and see you when you can go out and do a live stream or you can go out and play at the club because they feel like they're involved with your brand. They feel like they're a part of it, you know, and they get to watch you grow and they get to watch you take these next steps. Um, so that's that's kind of how we, we've we approached it in terms of, of reinvesting uh, what it is that that we make. And pretty much, you know, all the funds that we've accumulated to this point has only gone back into Alchemist. Uh, it's not like we take out a paycheck and, and, and go eat with it or, or anything. No, we just put it back in, into it and, and try to build something that's going to have more value later on. I, I frequently have back in conversations with my team and, and say, if somebody were all of a sudden give me gobs of money, I wouldn't take it and go buy a Ferrari. I'd throw it right back into the business. I, I would go get that studio, I'd get better cameras. I would get more of my management PR team on my social team or, you know, book more shows, be able to bring in more artists, be able to go bigger and better with the brand uh, where I would still take just the nominal paycheck. Um, yeah. Like, like what I get by with, I'm fine with what I get by with. And, you know, I wouldn't need a quarter million or half a million or a million dollars a year. I'd like throw it back into the company, you know, and, and that would be the investment. And, and after all that time, if somebody came back and said, well, you could have bought three Ferraris over the course of the years. I go, no, who cares? I had some of the most memorable experiences and gave some of the most memorable experiences to the fans and the people attending our events and the artists that came and played. That was my 
wanting to give it back and, 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 and smiling at the end of the day going, we did that. That was really cool. And of course, streaming it live and having it archived for people to go back and watch over and over again, 30 years from now going, I was there at that show. That was me on camera. Wow. You know, That's those priceless. kind of things. It's priceless. Yeah. Um, speaking of priceless and, and adding value to content that's created, have you looked into the NFT world at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, I just bought my first four M NFTs uh, a week and a half ago, and it's doing pretty good. Nice. So, yeah. Do you do you think you'll take any of the alchemist uh, stuff and and make them NFTs? And, and are you going to go down that path as well? Yeah, we're we're a hundred percent. We've already gotten talks with a, a few people to kind of help us with that. Um, we just created the Discord servers uh, for for uh, alchemist and uh, and BHM. Um, they're still being built out. I mean, this is all brand new stuff. <laughs> I think we got on Discord like two weeks ago you know that was like our first experience with it and then once we saw like wow man this is like a whole new thing that we didn't even think about i think that's the beauty of having like a, a network of people that do different things they can introduce you to, to things that you might not necessarily have known of and this was something that was big enough to where you know we see we see the potential there you know i think having utility behind an nft um you know giving people special things that own your nft can draw them more into your brand uh than they were before they feel like they're exclusively a part of your brand and that turns people into super fans and super fans are the people that are going to come out and support you no matter what so yes <laughs> we we've thought about it it's new for us um but we have people kind of putting concepts and, and ideas together and and a hundred percent. Awesome. Yeah. I'm in those same exact, literally the same talks right now. I'm glad you brought up discord. I actually shifted my whole communications platform over to discord uh, about a year ago. Um, I was using another platform, which shall not be named. And, uh, but uh, discord is the place to go. And, and, you know, I'll give one of the secrets out there. To, if anyone's watching this, if our fans are watching this, or any DJs out there watching it, if you want to know some of the biggest success stories of why we've gotten so many numbers with the DJ sessions, Discord. Yeah, <laughs> there I is. It's it. a gold mine of, of of ways to reach people that are, like you said, those super fans. You can go right into a group, talk to a few, go boom, hit a button, say we're live now, or check out this, and then all of a sudden. Grrr, and you're like, whoa, and, and you're not, people don't, if you don't understand marketing, if you don't understand networking, if you don't understand getting out there and you're just using the social networks, you're missing a huge piece of the pie there with Discord. No, with not we, having Discord. We, we almost feel, and this is my own personal observation that there's people are more committed to Discord than they are to the other channels right now. You know, Facebook is kind of like, yeah. It's, it's done, dude, like move on. And the stuff that we see in Discord, the engagement that you see in Discord, the, the communities that you see in Discord, I mean, no matter what channel you hop in, these people are like die hard for this community. That, that's that Discord server. Yep. And that's such an opportunity point to be able to give something to those people and, and build something new. It's scary, you know, you gotta start again from zero but luckily we have, you know, a few outlets that we can push out links to and slowly start growing the community. I mean, for, for one of our channels, it's not even live yet. We're just building it out and we already see people joining the, the channel that we haven't even promoted it yet. Like there's just people kind of jumping in that know us from either YouTube or, or someplace else. So yeah, yeah we're going to be kind of focusing on that and, uh, it's it's exciting, you know. It and is. We feel it so is. far removed from these these new generations, um, but but we have to learn and we have to adapt. I mean, our biggest audience for our YouTube channel is seventeen to twenty four. I mean, that's that's two generations removed, and you have to figure out like what's cool for them. And to your point, uh, in, in terms of like the meta metaverse and and all these things there was actually a recent study that was done that generation z 
would much prefer staying at home and doing something on their computer as opposed to going out to a club. That's the new generation. So if you hear that, you tell yourself, okay, well, this is like a whole new generation of people in a whole new market that you're going to have to serve. So where are they? Well, they're on Discord and they're in the metaverse and they're doing all this stuff. So, all right, man, we got to go there. Let's go. Yep. Hey, you couldn't have summed it up and said it better. And I hope DJ Sessions fans take note. If you're a DJ, you're a producer out there. What, what was just said by Julian is exactly what we've been laser point focused on uh, over the course of the strategy. Even when everything hit in 2020 and everyone jumped online, we took a huge step back and said, we need to refocus our audience. We need to go back in here, dial in, make some changes, come back. And we went off the grid kind of a little bit to do all this back end work while everyone went to the forefront and we're jumping online and look at me, look at me, look at me. And I'm like, let's pick back here and take a look at all our numbers and everything and what strategies we want to do. Uh, another one that's out there, you know, I, I, I'm assuming it's still, still should be pretty big. I, I have a team that handles all that stuff for me, but Reddit is also, you know, forums out there that you can kind of put stuff out into the groups. But I think discord is going to be a, a huge huge asset for anyone getting into this and, and finding those groups. So we're, so, we're like you a little bit. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of been pretty quiet, mm -hmm. you know, th throughout, throughout all of this. And, you know, it might not be the smartest thing because we're not posting on Facebook or Instagram every day, but we're busy behind the scenes kind of building something that is going to be able to sustain the next wave of what's going to happen. You know, so to just like you, we've, we've been pretty quiet. We're a little bit off the grid. We're working on the album. We're working on setting up these new platforms so that once for us, our goal, when that album hits, uh, all of these communities are ready to go. And we have the YouTube, the, the, the radio show and everything that's all going to hit at once. And uh, you almost hit with more power if you do it like that, as opposed to, you know, always trying to be at the forefront, like what you said, you know, kind of yeah. pulls your, your attention away from the actual work that needs to be done to be able to, to do the next thing. My, my personal Facebook is on friends only. So only my friends can see it, but I get my balls busted constantly for my vague booking practices. Cause I, I can't, I, I'm working on some, I found out some really cool stuff today, people, but I can't tell you what it is, but I swear it's coming out and you're going to see it all. But my crew, which my, my internal crew, I'm sending them daily updates. Our communication is like on point to sometimes where they're like, he over communicates. He tells us way too much of what's going on. I'm like, but at least you're up to speed. You know, I'm not crazy. And I'm not just vague booking a bunch of BS to try to stay relevant. There is a lot going on in the works. And I had to break it down for him about two weeks ago in, in like almost three paragraphs. And they're like, whoa, when you put it down like that, 2022 is going to be yeah. amazing. So um, congrats on putting all that stuff together. You know, you are, you said you are working a lot on the, in the back end of, of, of doing stuff, which is kind of primarily focusing on the, the business of entertaining others. When you're not entertaining others, what do you do to entertain yourself? This is my entertainment. <laughs> this is what I love, man. I think any entrepreneur that, that loves what they do and never really feels like work, it's just a passion. And you don't keep doing something for as long as we've do, been doing it if we weren't passionate about it. I mean, Dave and I both, I mean, we think about this nonstop. Uh, I can't say 24 hours a day, but at least 22, 20 to 22. Like, I don't really sleep that much, you know, throughout the night. You know, I think four hours and, and I'm good. And I'm, I'm always thinking about Alchemist, what, what's next, what do we do? BHM, what do we do? You know, the next track, who can, who can we bring on? Who can we co collaborate with? Uh, that's, it's, it's what we love, man. And I think when you truly love something, it, 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 it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll sit in this chair or, or in the studio all day and throughout half the night and just keep planning and, and just keep, keep trying to figure out what's, what's next. And uh, yeah. I can completely relate to that. People don't understand that they think I just go up, set up a video camera, press record, stream live, and it's done. They don't see the waking up at 630 in the morning, yeah. working all the way through till midnight, you know, maybe getting some TV, some lunch, dinner time in there. And then 
getting that four hours of sleep, waking up at three o'clock in the morning, typing a note into my phone so I can go back to bed for a couple hours, rinse, wash, repeat, wake up at 630 and do it all over again. They think it's just, oh, it's so easy. And it's like, no, they only see the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. In that, what we just kind of described, our, our both of our work schedules are kind of similar. Would you recommend a career as a DJ slash producer to young kids? And what are some of the pros and cons of that? So neither Dave or myself um, are DJ producers full time, even at this point in our careers. I mean, we both I've I've owned a marketing company for the last 11 years, 11, 10, 10, 11 years, something like that. And uh, Dave's a, a teacher, a chemistry teacher. And if it, if it weren't for, you know, the stability of having our jobs, none of this would be possible. And I think there's a lot of people that just want to rely on music to make a living. Um, you're in for a hard, hard life. If that's, if that's all you want to do, you just want to do music full time and you expect to, to make it big or, or, or whatever, uh, it's going to be quite difficult for you. Um, luckily I, I can work from home so I can, I can do both at the same time. I don't have like a, a set schedule per se. Um, but that source of income that comes from our normal jobs, definitely contributes to being able to do the things that we're doing when it comes to music. Um, and that's just the truth behind it um, because it's expensive. You know, if you, if you truly want to do it right and you're committed to what it is that you're doing, you're going to have to pony up the investments that are necessary in order to be able to provide that investment, to be able to, to do the infrastructure, to be able to, to give the best possible experience. And for, for Dave and I to be able to travel, you know, just because we have shows that are starting to come now doesn't mean that that's always what it was. We're on two different parts of the world. He's in Europe. I'm here. Uh, and we still, even though we have matching studios here, there's still no experience like being able to work together um, in the same room. So I will fly to Europe or he will come here. Well, our jobs are able to, to finance that. You know, if you want to start making connections with people in dance music, you're going to have to fly to Amsterdam. You're going to have to go to ADE. You're going to have to rub elbows with with people that are there because that's where the deals are made. The deals are made at the parties. You know, most of the time that's that's where it all happens. Or, you know, at the at the show at the uh, at Amsterdam dance event or, you know, Miami Music Week or any of these things, you have to go if you're not there. Uh, you're not doing it right. You know, you have to, people need to see you. People need to know that you're more than just, you know, an email or words behind a keyboard. You have to build that per personal relationship with people. And in order to build that personal relationship with people, you're going to have to buy the plane tickets. You're going to have to fly across the world. You're going to have to do what's necessary. Um, and for most people, music will not be able to provide that kind of income right away. I'm not saying it's impossible, but even where we're at now, it's still not, you know, it's, it's, it's still not a reality for us. Hopefully it will be soon. And it's still our dream. And I think we're going to get there relatively quickly uh, to be able to replace one with the other, but don't just rely on music to, to think that it's going to be, it's going to be enough because then you're also going to come, come at it from a, a point of desperation with shows. And you'll be able to take whatever it is that they're willing to offer you because they know that you need the money. And promoters aren't always the most, you know, kind people out there. Not all, but some, you know, they'll take advantage of you just for, because they can. And that's business, you know, like it's not their fault. If you're coming at it and you're willing to devalue your brand to a point where you're willing to play for a hundred bucks, as a business person, they'll take it, right? but don't expect to be making a living from it in, in a way that's going to be able to, to allow you to do the things that, that you need to do to become successful. Absolutely. I think that's a great piece of advice there is, is uh, you know, as most multiple people think that the, the, the people, I mean, unless you're in the top, top of the top, you know, 
most people are have a day job. Yeah. Most people have a side gig, something that they're doing that is paying the bills. I myself have two other companies, you know, uh, I did, you know, I've been in entertainment for 30 years of my life. Um, you know, it's just now am I even getting into having a brand and talks or in the position to where we, we could raise enough money to actually pay for other people to do work for us, you know, yeah. which is kind of a really awesome thing. You know, if, if, you know, we, we have everything from social media managers to PR people to, you know, bookings to, I mean, it's, it's a lot, you know, um, publicists and, and all that fun stuff that when you look at the whole bottom line costs, like, you know, you also have to know that I'm probably going to pay out more money for people to do work for me than I'll take in myself, you that's know, okay. and that's okay. That's totally okay. You know, because and somebody, a friend of mine just told me recently, he says, Darren, stop doing everything yourself. Yeah. Start paying other people to do. You will see your worth. You, your company growth will go so much bigger when you start doing that. You know, um, just find good people to trust, people that are competent and know what they can do and can perform and pay them to do their job and let you do what you do over here and let them do that for you. Um, you but know, nobody's ever going to care as much about your company as you. True. True. Uh, definitely explain that situation a lot that this is my baby. This is my child. This is, I love this. And if somebody comes in my life right now and says, Oh, choose me or, you know, choose your company. I'm like, say la vie. Yeah. Bye Felicia. Have a yeah, nice yeah. day. You know, <laughs> sorry. You know, this is, this is what works and this is what I love doing. Uh, so far that hasn't necessarily happened yet, but um, you know, keeping the dream alive. So we're going to wrap things up here really quickly. You know, is there anything you want to let our DJ sessions fans know before we let you get back to, to work down there? Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you like good music, you know, I don't want to categorize ourselves too much. If you just like dance music, if you, if you like journeys, if you like hard hitting bass, euphoric, you know, leads, big drops, and uh, good storytelling. Yeah, just follow us. Give us, uh, let us know what you think. Now uh, you can follow us at Al Alchemist Official on Instagram. Uh, that's really the best one to follow us on. Uh, we really don't do much with uh, with Facebook, although we should. Um, and then you can also check out our YouTube channel on. Um, it's a uh, at British Heavy Music B R U T I S H Heavy Music uh, on YouTube. It's the largest community for side trance in the world on YouTube. And uh, there's a lot of things that are going to be coming in 2022 from us. Uh, and we'd love to meet you. You know, let us know what you think about our music. Go comment and shoot us a DM. And uh, if you guys are producers out there and you want us to listen to your music, shoot us a DM. Send us a SoundCloud link and we'd love to listen to it. Well, you got it right there. You know where to find Alchemist and where to go to. That's A-L-C-H-I-M-Y-S-T, by the way. Look them up online. We're looking forward to touching base with you. Probably, at, you know, second quarter 2022, third quarter 2022. I want to follow you. I want to see what's going on with all this build out and everything that's going on. Definitely meet you in person as well. Uh, that would be that would be definitely a fun time there. Um, thank you so much for coming on the DJ sessions today, Julian. I really appreciate it. Next time we'll get Dave out of the hockey game and get him yeah. on camera. Well, thanks so much for inviting us. You know, it means a lot to us. And we really appreciate the support. So thank you. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it again. Thank you. Cool. And on that note, don't forget to go to our website, thedjsessions.com. Find us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Hashtag us, the DJ Sessions or TDJS, if you're so bold. This is Darren and Julian from The Alchemist coming to you on the virtual sessions, brought to you by the DJ Sessions. And you know what happens on the DJ Sessions? The music never stops.